fundamental change is the adoption of a new idea or a behavior by any organization. What is an organization change? It is adoption of a new idea or a behavior by an organization. So it is a way of altering an existing organization to increase organizational effectiveness for achieving its objective. This slide I've already shown you, so I'll not explain. I just want to connect uh, uh, with the previous uh, portion so that we can, uh, can immediately cover the rest of it. So organizational change is primarily structural in character, and it is designed to bring about alterations in organization. That is what an organizational change is. And this slide I showed you last time as well. So just to give you an idea of what is the change process. And in that, I told you that you change the status quo, which is prevailing with a new status quo. But as you uh, try to uh, change the old status quo with new status quo, or as the change is uh, uh, about to take place, replacing old status quo with the new status quo, then there is uh, naturally people are used to a particular way of doing things. And when they foresee some change about to take place, so they try to resist that change, despite the fact that it might be useful. So uh, immediately we find some sort of resistance coming up, and we we'll, uh, we have discussed some uh, ways of resisting, and we'll uh, in detail discuss that too also today. So resistance, uh, uh, when it builds up. It uh, turns into a chaos, and uh, then uh, the uh, as the time passes, people uh, uh, for, uh, start foreseeing the ray of hope. People start seeing that uh, something good might be coming. Something be uh, something be better is in the store, so uh, they start transforming ideas. They start tuning up to the change. They uh, adopt a reconciliatory attitude toward the change. And in the process, integration takes place and the uh, new status comes into force. And uh, with the passage of time, that new status people get used to it and they started uh, uh, living their life accordingly. Now, uh, as I uh, showed you the process of change and in that when the, uh, we see that when the change is around the corner, the change is about to take place then some sort of resistance appear. And uh, the reason is that, as I said, people are used to a particular way of doing things. And when you uh, break that organizational inertia, then uh, they feel uncomfortable. Organizational inertia is the tendency for an organization as a whole to resist change and want to maintain the status quo. Uh, companies or organizations that suffer from inertia become flexible and can't become inflexible, in fact. 
when the resistor uh, resistance uh, resistance uh, start they are in, inflexible uh, they are not uh, willing to uh, change over switch over so uh, they uh, fail to adopt to environmental or internal demands for change at this point of time, when there is a resistance developing against the change which is ensuing, the change which is uh, uh, seen there, one of the most important tasks of all managers is to facilitate and take such steps which, uh, which smoothly uh, change over. So change is always inevitable because uh, as the time goes on, uh, things uh, do uh, change because of several uh, reasons, which we uh, reviewed in detail in the previous session. So uh, change is always inevitable, but so is resistance to change. As change is inevitable, so is resistance. And organization always and must strive to adopt to change if it wants to be successful. Now, there are uh, different types of resistances. Some is active resistance, the other are passive resistance. Some signs of active resistance are, for instance, people start criticizing openly so being critical is one way that people openly start saying that this is no good this is not likely to bring better prospects for the organization so uh, people start uh, blocking they start uh, say uh, um, not accepting it uh, they start and not adhering to what is good about it. And in fact, they start sabotaging it. Sabotage means they practically take uh, certain steps to uh, make sure that the change is not affected. The change is, uh, they want to uh, sabotage the change. They want uh, the change uh, not to be uh, become uh, successful. And uh, uh, with uh, ridiculing also starts. Being critical is one way. Ridiculing or making fun of uh, things which are going to happen or things which are happening. That is another uh, active way of resisting the change. And uh, they uh, would start uh, uh, criticizing, they would start ridiculing, and they would start even spreading rumors that uh, th uh, this has happened, that has happened. Rumors are unfounded statements, are unfounded news. So uh, uh, rumor, uh, rumor mongering starts uh, you know, to uh, discredit the uh, success uh, stories. And in, in the uh, process, they also start actively uh, doing something uh, which uh, would reverse the change. And uh, the, uh, the, uh, beside the humor mongering, they would also start distorting the facts, using the facts, a few facts uh, out of context, to prove that things are going wrong. And uh, they, uh, they start raising objection, they start blaming uh, different people, uh, they start uh, calling them uh, self, uh, selfish people and uh, declaring that uh, things are uh, being done uh, for self, uh, selfish motives. And uh, they uh, would uh, uh, crit uh, criticism one way of uh, criticizing it also to uh, try to find faults whether they are actually there or not there, and then uh, the uh, start creating a, an atmosphere of hopelessness 
a, a, uh, an atmosphere of pessimism and uh, then uh, hurling threats and intimidation to uh, people who are sponsoring the change, uh, threatening them for uh, severe consequences. Uh, and uh, then uh, they start uh, uh, pro uh, prop uh, propagating against uh, that change with uh, with arguments uh, which are normally on fl flimsy grounds, those arguments on flimsy grounds, or all sorts of negative things like distorting of facts, etc., also uh, begin. This, uh, these types of reactions, we call them as active resistance. Then passive resistance, uh, is also there in passive resistance. The symptoms of passive resistance is that when uh, the they are being lectured, they are being told, they are being convinced uh, that the uh, change is likely to be good. Uh, on the face of it, uh, they might agree. They may agree verbally, but uh, they uh, would uh, not practically do anything positive to help out the change or adjust with the change. Then uh, practically, uh, when they are not moving around in the right direction, then uh, obviously they, uh, they hope and pray that uh, the uh, change it comes to naught and it, it fails, then uh, they uh, would not willingly uh, do a thing uh, which is uh, to be done in order to make the change effective. In fact, they would drag the feet, drag the feet means they would move uh, uh, in the direction when they are told, but actually they are, they are not putting their heart and soul into it. They are just uh, trying to uh, show up as if they are uh, going along, but they uh, try to uh, lag behind and do things unwillingly and uh, hoping and praying that it fails. When they are told about uh, the different procedures and different modes of behavior of our different actions uh, which are required to make the change successful well at times they would just uh, pretend that they do not know it so uh, they would not flatly refuse to obey what is going on but they would just uh, uh, try to uh, uh, say that they are not in picture about the instructions or they are uh, uh, not in know of what is to be done. So they would pretend that way. If uh, if they are asked something by their colleagues who are uh, moving in that uh, uh, positive direction, then they would not uh, uh, share the information with them. They would not uh, give them a good piece of advice or suggestion or help them or support them. So they would uh, be standing by, that means they would be waiting and uh, hoping that the uh, change fails. And uh, uh, that is uh, their attitude. That These are some of the characteristics of passive resistance. Then uh, why people uh, resist? What are the common causes of the resistance? Uh, and there are a few which are mentioned on this slide. The uh, first reason is, in a, reason is that they believe that the change process is being handled improperly. Second cause may be they believe there isn't any need for the change. Third, they believe that the change will make it harder for them to meet their needs. Fourth, they believe that the risks outweigh the benefits and they lack the ability to make the change. 
and they believe that the change will fail anyway. They are pessimistic and uh, they feel uh, see no ray of hope in uh, getting uh, the change uh, successful. And uh, they believe that the change is inconsistent with their values. And they believe those responsible for the change cannot be trusted. Well, change has to take place. If change is bona fide and decided by the competent authority at a particular level, that change has to occur and has to take place. So uh, resistance is also going to be there, some sort of resistance active resistance or passive resistance, some sort of resistance would always be uh, there. Some quarters would always be opposing it uh, openly or secretly. So uh, what is the role of the leadership or the managers in uh, this particular case when the change has to uh, be expedited and uh, made effective? This is what we call change management. So change management is a systematic approach to dealing with the transition or the transformation of an organization's goals, processes, or technology. You systematically go about putting the things at right place, shuffling the staff if it is required, reducing the staff, having golden handshake or uh, adding the staff in uh, 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 cutting down the size of the uh, uh, organization or expanding the uh, organization having uh, various campuses uh, for the organization so uh, uh, the change many management is a very important part of overall management the purpose of change management is to implement strategies for effective change, controlling change and helping people to adopt change. Now, change management, as I said, has to be done. Change management has to take place. So how the managers should take steps and climb up the ladder of success for bringing about a change. The first step on the chair, uh, on the, uh, these uh, uh, stairs of success is that the managers must establish a sense of urgency. They should convince uh, the pe uh, people in the organization, the persons in the organization, that uh, why change is required. They should motivate them. And a second step is create a guiding coalition. When a change is to be put in place, there should be a certain uh, co there should be a core committee or those active motivated persons who uh, have the, got the initiative and the energy uh, to uh, take on a new challenge. So uh, put that, te that team uh, together. That is a, a team, um, a, a team is to be prepared and team management is to be done who are to sponsor and propel and move uh, that uh, uh, ball of change rolling. Then the third is develop a change vision. That team uh, and the uh, leader uh, leading that team should, uh, should uh, have a, a communication network have uh, different ways of uh, communication, formal as well as informal, to convince the people 
that uh, the change is necessary, the change is urgent, the change is according to the times, the change uh, is uh, beneficial for all the organization and the individuals too. And the fourth uh, stair, fourth step on the stair would be communicate the vision for buy-in. And number fifth is empower broad-based action. And number six is generate short-term wins. What is this short-term wins? Short-term wins means that uh, as you move on, then uh, if uh, you have got some initial success stories, do make them public and propagate so that uh, those who are sitting on the sidelines those who have uh, pessimistic ideas, those who are sarcastic about it, uh, they uh, should also uh, join in the uh, join in because everybody likes to be on the winning side. So generate short term wins means this. So uh, never let up. That means that uh, the uh, momentum of change should uh, be kept up, the pressure should not be let loose, the pressure may develop and uh, they, it should move on. So incorporate changes into culture. Now, uh, uh, the, uh, while change is in progress, it, it should uh, 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 go with full force and once it has climaxed, then it should uh, tend to stay. It should be of permanent nature. It should be absorbed and it should become as part of routine now. The change should by become part of routine now and everybody should feel contented and happy and start moving along with the change. The first slide which I showed you where the process of change I showed you that there was a, a old uh, status quo. Uh, then uh, we went through the process. Uh, there was resistance, there was cribbing, there was uh, uh, different uh, uh, sorts of positive and negative resistance. Ultimately, a new status uh, quo was developed and uh, things became smooth and life started uh, getting normal and uh, everything streamlined. If we have to have effective organizational change, well, uh, I have, uh, uh, would sum, I, sum I it up in these uh, uh, five, six points. First, clearly define the change and align it to the organizational goal. What type of change is going to be and how it is going to be incorporated? how it would serve with the overall scenario and the ultimate goals of the organization. Determine impact and those affected, how the things would change, the different combinations, different sections, different uh, wings, uh, how the manpower would shuffle, reduce or increase, or uh, what sort of new skills will be incorporated, develop a communication st strategies. All, all person should be uh, kept, uh, kept um, in, in, in contact and uh, they should be uh, updated on the progress of the change which is taking place. Uh, for uh, this purpose, if uh, different personnel at different levels if they need training, provide them training. They should be uh, given the training for the change. I, uh, for instance, giving you the example, if you are uh, having uh, computerization of your organization, everything is go going to become digital. If the digital technology is going to be incorporated, then, uh, then it's very important that the old timers, especially, they should be uh, given some refresher order, some training regarding the app uh, applications 
of uh, this uh, uh, you know, in, uh, information technology. Implement a sports structure. There should be persons who should be uh, there to sort out if, uh, if and when some problem arise and measure the change uh, uh, process so that uh, the uh, change which is taking place and it, it is well planned change it must be in different phases which is which are uh, 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 there and it is planned in a way that it should move in a certain direction so uh, the proper monitoring and evaluation should uh, be there uh, to ensure that uh, the change is taking place and uh, are take, uh, are going towards the right direction.